What's up? Film study time. Game number one of the season for Mississippi State. A squeaker in a win over Louisiana Tech. Wyatt got the ball. Wyatt back to throw. Wyatt look. Myers toward the end zone. Passes. Oh, of course, touchdown by Matthew Butler. Matthew Butler, Jack. This film study is sponsored by Mississippi Land Bank. Visit them online at mslandbank.com. And by Mississippi Farm Bureau Insurance. Go with the home team. Now, I don't want to spend too much time talking with you here on camera because this is a long film study. I'm going to cover a lot of ground because in this game, as you well know, there was some good, some bad, and some ugly. The good, the bad, the ugly. We'll start off with the good. It kind of got bad. Then it got ugly. But for State, it got good again. Let's start off with the good. 14 to nothing lead early on, a couple of turnovers created on defense. Okay, let's look at the interception that sets State up for its first score. Tyrus Wheat, the one who intercepts it. So you can just kind of keep your eye on him um, and we'll see how it happens. Four man front, 3 3, but it's a four man because he's up, trying to throw a slant, and Wheat's in a throwing lane, and just makes a play on the ball. I was looking at this play, and there's quite a bit going on. First of all, it is down a distance, second and five. It's not a third down play, but State's going aggressive, and they're motioning the back out of here. And what happens when you motion out, linebacker Brule moves up. He's actually going to go out, and it moves another linebacker over to that side, and that's going to be two more defenders on top of three that are already out there. So what I think is happening is it's a – it's a numbers thing for the quarterback. So if you look, all right, the back is motioning out to the right, and look at the rotation of the state linebackers. They're now going here, both of them here. And again, you've got one, two, three. So what I think they're doing is reading, if we have numbers, we may throw a screen out here on this side. If we don't, which in this case they don't, because you have all those uh, defenders, then we're going to go backside slant, just one-on-one. -on -one. So that's what they take. Again, motion is going to remove two guys from the middle of the field, and so they're going to take that backside slant. What happens on the play on the line of scrimmage is you get cut blocks with the two inside uh, linemen here and here. I think that's Young and Crumity. So everybody, <laughs> right guard, right tackle, come in here and cut. Uh, center, well, actually, I guess it's guard, center and tackle cut, and you leave two standing up. The two on the outside, they're not even trying to block them here with the design of this play, and that's why nobody engages Tyrus Wheat. Now, whether or not they want that to happen, I don't know, but that's what happens. Center, right guard, cut young, right tackle tries to cut that end on the wide side of the field. You get a cut block from guard and tackle, and actually, this um, is very close to being right here a uh, chop block call. Crummity's getting hit below the waist, and another comes in there and hits him above the waist. So it's one of those where, honestly, like if you, it's just, it's probably best that it's a no call, but it's really close. If that tackle hits him, it's going to be, you know, a good case of chop block. But he's the one that nobody blocks. And I find this really interesting right here. I, I don't know what the scouting report says, but something tells Tyrus Wheat to stay and not go flying in there. I don't know what it is, but if it's scouting report or knowing that's what we're going to get as a slant behind him. But something tells him, stay right here. You're in the throwing lane. And it's obviously the right move. And, you know, with a ball thrown, uh, a, a good – you know, 85 mile an hour fastball here to get up with two hands and make this catch is pretty doggone impressive. So you get the turnover. When I was watching it live from the radio booth, uh, I actually thought maybe the throw had gotten through and deflected back into him. That's how fast it happened. So for some of y'all that were at the game, you might have seen it. There you get a clearer look. Uh, center right guard try to cut. Young 93 don't get it done. Uh, they try. They do get Crumity cut to the ground, but you know it's left Wheat standing there. I think those cut blocks is what's telling him, hey, something's up here. This is not a typical play, and so he holds up and makes a play. Smart and athletic. That leads to the first touchdown of the ball game for State. It's going to be Marks out of the backfield. You most likely remember the play. 
They're on the left hash, so they go on the short side of the field to that left sideline. They're going to swing him out of there. Linebacker is recognizing it for La Tech, but they don't adjust, and it's exactly what you get, an easy touchdown. Um, when I said linebacker recognizing it, this is what I meant. You look right here. I say linebacker. He's actually defensive, stand-up defensive end in a 4-2-4-3 defense. I don't know if they've got nickel in or not, two linebackers or three. I just know it's a four-man front, stand-up defensive end. Watch him recognize what's happening right here. See him right here? Watch him point. So he knows what defense they're in. He knows that he is coming off the edge unless we adjust. And he knows the backs of this side and <laughs> watch for him swinging out here, and he's trying to point that out. So he stands up, sees it, points to him, and then to, I don't know if he's just you know, going through the motions or if he's telling his linebacker teammate he's going out there. He calls it, diagnoses it perfectly, but nobody has time to adjust because you know, you're getting blocked out here on the edge. Ball's going to be completed behind the line of scrimmage, first of all. The safety and linebacker help is way removed from where they would have to be because they're staying in the middle because State has gone three receivers to the wide side of the field. And I don't know if um, I don't know if they run a slant down here in the bottom. I didn't get to see the the route finish. But I know you got cross here and slant here. And maybe the thinking is, okay, you know, if he drops then maybe one's coming in the middle, and that's going to open the middle of the field for you. And if, and if you're the quarterback and you see him peel off to take this, then your eyes now come back to the middle of the field, and you've either got one here or two here, possibly, depending on if one of those were to come and remove from the middle of the field. I think we're going to see Will, Will Rogers look after the snap right at this rush end and make sure he's coming off the edge. Let's watch his eyes. Yeah, Will Rogers puts his eyes right on the rush. As soon as he sees him come, he already knows I'm giving the ball here and I'm depending on this block to happen. And uh, excellent design, and you walk it in there. All right, so you're up um, seven nothing after the play. They're gonna option out to the right right here and they've lined up four receivers to the wide side of the field. Interesting formation. Got them a penalty later because they weren't lined up correctly. They're trying to option that way, get an early pitch. Quarterback tries to block with the pitch off the shoulder pads to fumble and get a recovery. This is excellent hustle. Several things I noticed about the play when you went back and watched it. One is a guy who recovers the fumble is one of two players lined up farthest from it, Aaron Odom, which trails the play all the way over here to make the recovery. Um, you're going to get excellent pursuit and kind of pressure on the play by uh, two linebackers, one on the line of scrimmage um, and, and one trailing in, in Watson. Uh, you, the safety green was getting there as well. So it's a play that in theory looks like it's going to work great, right? Like we've put four blockers out in front of this thing already and we've got all this space out here with no defenders in it, they've given us all this cushion, and we're going to speed option over here and get a pitch and, and maybe make yards and break a tackle here. But it uh, was not going to work that way. I'll show you what I mean. So the first thing is you get outside from Tim's, okay, Sherman Tim's, and so that's why you're not getting a quarterback attacking, you know, more vertically. He's actually going wide. So, you know, you, you jump it right here if you're Tim's, that's good. They were, in theory, again, comboing up to somebody, but going to be way too slow. Watson's going to run this thing down out here and, and string it out, and you're going to get great pursuit from the safety. So my thing is the, the fumbled snap. Even if he catches this snap right here with where he is, if he catches this cleanly, what you're about to see is Emerson is fighting through a block. He's going to get there. Watson is going to get there, line of scrimmage. Green is going to get there, line of scrimmage. And you got Tim's, who the quarterback is trying to get in his way. State's just going to pursue this thing down, even if it's a clean pitch. But it's not. Bounces away. You go back and watch Odom uh, one more time. Here he is lined up at in, and uh, or got his hand down. Watch him squeeze through. Hustle, 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 and go get the football. 
All right, here is the touchdown after that turnover. It's going to be screened to Calvin, who then turns it up and turns this into a screen touchdown. We'll watch it first. It's three receivers left. They fake it to the back, throw it out, get two blocks. I'll show you who they are. And then it's Jets from there. Um, love the play call down here. And you can tell – I. It's an experienced player in Calvin. I think he knew he had a chance to score before they even snapped the football. Uh, a couple of things to notice. Formation, three by one. And initially, and they did a lot of this in the game, that is show one look, pre-snap, and are rotating out of it. What they're doing is they're going to bring him down. They're going to run this safety back to the middle of the field, and they're still playing cover three, meaning he's going to have a deep third. This corner is going to drop on this side and play a deep third. He's going back to middle to have a deep third. He's flying down to be an underneath defender, and the deep third on the other side is actually going to be the number two. And they've got a call built in here where on the outside of three receiver, they're locking that up. So in traditional cover three, that corner is going to have a deep third. But in this one, they've what looks like to me a nickel defender is going to be that deep third out there so those are your cover three and that's why that safety is going back to the middle of the field and it kind of works out for them so when you roll the play fake to the back why is that necessary why is it a part of this what i think is pretty clear right here is if you watch uh, these linebackers here and here watch their movement when the fake begins to happen here they come downhill. See, you've not even made a handoff, but you're getting pursuit to the ball because it could be a handoff. He doesn't freeze. He's coming. He doesn't freeze. He's coming. And they're removing themselves from where this football is now about to go. So that helps. So the play action really helps. The other thing is you're getting two key blocks right here. One is Wally on the first defender on the hash, and that's the safety coming downhill. Wally's going to throw a good block right here and allow him to catch this ball and get to the inside. The other thing that's going to happen is Cam Jones, a guard, gets upfield and does an excellent job peeling back to catch this linebacker who's been drawn up by the play action. So watch, uh, watch Wally first up on the hash. He gets into the defender right here, turns him. Defender kind of gets knocked off his balance, too. So it's not a great job by the safety, but Wally's in the right spot. And here, you know, it comes inside. Now pull your eyes back inside here and watch uh, Jones turning on the linebacker. He's in the right spot, turns and just catches him, boom, knock him out. So, or, or knock him out of the place. So what you've got is seal here. You got seal here from Jones, and the catch has been made, and here we go. And that's pretty much, uh, you know, pretty much what you need. That's it. Uh, because he is excellent with the football in his hands. Up 14 nothing, and then some of the bad. Explosive plays allowed on defense that bang, bang, LaTeX right back in it. Okay, here's some of the bad. It's a bust on defense. They're going to throw it to the outside guy, faking, you know, what looks like, you know, bubble screen, quick screen out here to a three receiver side. We'll watch it first. Looks like man-to-man. -man. That's the way it looks to me anyway when you line up. Pump fake it. The corner forwards bites on it, and then they're over the head. So it's exactly what you're hoping for as an offense when you call this and you pump fake that, uh, trying to get over the top. You know, And I was looking at it here in alignment when they lined up. Again, they've put four on the line of scrimmage, okay, and two are walking up. So six are engaged at the line of scrimmage. That's three down linemen and uh, three linebackers. So then you go, well, where's everybody else? Where's your uh, four DBs in that particular look, or five DBs in that particular look? So you're singled up. Emerson on the backside, he's locked up in man-to-man, -man, no question about it. And everybody else is in a man-to-man -man look, head up the receivers. The only one is a backside safety one. He doesn't see back or anybody to his side. He's coming over. Now, I don't know if he's supposed to start there, or if this was a mistake, because the back's on this side, three receivers over here on this side, the only player is that singled-up guy, and he's lining up here pre-snap. So I don't know if he's misaligned or if he couldn't get back quick enough or what the problem here is. So that's just one of the things that you, know, you question the pre-snap alignment. So you see on the snap, 
one thing that's happening is, okay, Green, the safety over the top, is coming over, but he's way on the other side of the field. The other thing that happens is, uh, obviously, the corner out here jumps this. Okay, so if it is man-to-man, -man, which, again, it looks like it, then we got a problem somewhere, either on the corner on the outside or on the inside. So you could say, well, maybe there's a rule, and, man, if he comes underneath, you're going to – come off and you turn that receiver loose, but then who's over the top? Is it him? Is it him? Because it can't be him. I, all I'm saying is if it is a man-to-man -man look, then somebody's busted right here. You know, it's either the corner or it's one of those on the inside because both of these defenders run with this number two receiver right here. He sticks and he sticks. And like I say, the safety's way too far to get over the top. So either it's a bust to let him go by the corner or we got somebody who was supposed to come over the top. And, again, without being in a huddle, I don't know, but we just know that it definitely is a bust to turn him loose and somebody doesn't get over. And they turn it into six on your mistake. Okay, here's the bust against a third and short run game where quarterback is going to, you know, read this, I think. He meshes and then keeps the football and turns it into a big uh, touchdown run. Watch it first. Everybody bunched up there third and short. He keeps around the edge, and it's not accounted for. You know, these offenses, spread offenses have had zone read stuff. You've seen quarterbacks running the ball a lot, and sometimes this can happen without a bust on defense. But when it looks like this, it makes me think somebody's out of position. State has three down linemen, three linebackers walked up, two on the edge, one in the middle. There's your six-man front in this you know, base nickel defense right here, and they're all bunched up around the, the line of scrimmage because you have a tight end H and a back back there with just three receivers. So look at the rest of your defense, your next level. You're locked up in man on third and short, locked up in man on third and short. And this is man too, giving a little cushion because your wide side of the field throws going to be in the air a little longer. But look at the position of Emerson. He is actually inside of the receiver. Receiver's here, he's lined up here. So he's going to try to push him to that sideline and use it in man to man. So it's man to man. So who's accounting for who? If there's a throw, who has him in man to man? Who has the back in man to man? You have to ask those questions. And, you know, I doubt very seriously that both of these safeties are supposed to be in the same spot on the backside of this defense. And if you look, that's where I think the problem is. As a ball is snapped, you have two safeties, both Duncan and Peters, who, yes, the ball's on the left hash, but these are man-to-man -man responsibilities. The only outside container edge player is slamming down inside, taking on this tight end on the edge of the line of scrimmage. There's nobody next level, and you actually are wasting a defender here because instead of being one outside and one outside, you both have come over here to the same spot of the field here into the backside. So that's what I think is safeties get themselves out of position from a responsibility standpoint right here. And that's why when he keeps the football, you know, and he should, and goes down if he's reading this, he keeps. You've got one defender who's being blocked. He's looking right here. I think that's green, but he can't see that he has a football, I don't think, because he hesitates. He should see right now he's got the ball, try to fight through it. He's a little late. And then you got two next-level defenders unblocked, both keying the running back. So I think somebody's out of position. Which one, we don't know. Uh, but that's a bust against a third and short run game. And now you got a tie ball game. The good, the bad, got to cover all of it. Unfortunately, here comes some of the ugly. A stretch where in the second and third quarters of the ball game, Mississippi State offensively never ran four consecutive plays without either a penalty or a turnover. So let's take a look at coverage first. What they are doing, and they did this a lot in the game, is show him uh, a, a two safety look, like a cover two look with those corners up trying to confuse him here. Maybe that's what gets him on this. Corners are up, two safeties back, three snap. It looks like cover two versus two by two. But on the snap, what's happening is they're rotating him back to the middle of the field. He's free, and then everybody else is man. He's going to come up and actually be man-to-man -man on this slot. Man-to-man -man here. They're going to lock those up. They're singling up. You're going to have a linebacker who takes the back in man-to-man, -man, and they're going to have one robber floating in the middle of the field. So this is cover one with a robber 
underneath. So they make it look one way pre-snap, change it post-snap. So let's look at a couple of things. First of all, let's look at the protection. What's happening right here? You have a back who's going to help if uh, five or six come. Neither of these linebackers come. They both drop. So he's going to check, see that, and then release in the route underneath and does a pretty good job. It's only a four-man rush. And what you get is singled up right here, tackle on the outside rush. You get singled up by left guard. You get a single up here right guard, and you get a one-on-one -on -one right tackle. And everybody does a pretty good job. And the center who is uncovered actually winds up turning back and helping right here with his left guard. And the protection, I think, is good enough right here. You see both tackles hold up. Now here's a pocket you can step into and climb vertically. What I mean by that is as a quarterback, you want that's what you want to be able to do is step this way and then get the ball off. And the reason you can is because inside's being stopped. Now, you don't want to be this far back. These guys don't want to be this far back. But you can step in there and hang in there and get the ball out right here. So then protection holds up. It's not bad. But if you look, routes are now starting to come open if you look left side of your screen. And, and Will has decided right here, should I escape to my right? His eyes come off the routes, starts to step through, sees a hand, and holds up. Doesn't want to get grabbed. And see, so now his eyes are not on routes. Now it's improvisation time. But what if he's standing right here, not thinking about escaping, and the ball is ready to come out? You've got a center fielder, middle of the screen you can't see. But Austin Williams knows that, and he's running against man-to-man. -man. He can break this off shallow. The throw could possibly come in here. We just can't see the safety. The other thing is you're getting a man-to-man -man, uh, comeback on the outside. It's going to be open. And you're getting a... Um, Underneath man-to-man, -man too, what's a good ball carrier who is trained to make the first guy miss. And if you throw an accurate throw right here, he may not get the first down, but you could probably get it to him where he can turn and take on these two defenders and see if he can get through them. But you got options. And let's look at it. So, so keep your eyes on the routes. First, look and, and watch Dylan Johnson out of the backfield. We'll watch that one. Here's what I mean by that. So if Will is strong and in the pocket right here and is ready and the ball's out now, if Dylan Johnson catches that ball now, he may get tackled, but at least it's positive play. He may break it. He may dive to the first down stick if the ball hits him right now, if that's the decision. Now look up top. Okay, sorry about that. This is uh, I'll draw you a better circle. We'll look up top to Makai Polk, who in man-to-man -man is, you know, reading a cover right here, puts on the brakes. So watch him. If he puts if the ball is gone, okay, turn your eyes now back to Will Rogers in the pocket uh, here. Okay, sorry about that. Look at him in the pocket. If his eyes are to the sideline and he sees the one-on-one, -on -one, and what if the ball is coming out right now to the sideline, then what you've got is Makai Polk's going to stop and catch this football for a first down. See, the moment he breaks on the outside is when Will has brought his eyes down and thinking about escaping out to the right, even though the pocket's okay. So uh, this is just an example. It seems like picking, but it's just an example that, you know, sometimes the protection is good enough to be in there and let this thing go on time and have a chance for a completion um, if he lets it go. Now, he doesn't, hesitates, wants to get out, decided a little too early to leave, and then it's string it out and almost gets a first down throw uh, t via improvisation. But here's one thing about that, too. <clears throat> right now, Jameer Calvin is giving him his arm. Okay, and you see Will's eyes go back to the middle. I don't know, but one coaching point is right here. If you're, if I'm telling, hey, if you do this, you know, this is not a bad job. Reverse out, flip, and run away, and you're running to your left. You're right handed quarterback going to your left. There's no point in you looking back in here to the middle of the field to see if you can find somebody. Don't even put your eyes in there. Don't even think about it. Go ahead and find that sideline or run. Because I think right now, see, if you look, here's, a, here's when the ball should be coming out. If he throws this right now into this window, Calvin with his hand up is going to catch it with plenty of room to spare. But something is drawing Will's attention back here. You see his eyes are back here. So it's just little things, little kind of continuity, timing, don't leave too early. And then when you do roll to your left, just think sideline the whole way and get it out a little earlier and you may get a first down. Here's one where you get a one-on-one -on -one back shoulder route up the field and it is a completion. But there's an issue over here with the left side of your offensive line. 
that allows this stand-up defensive end to go inside of the tackle and straight to the quarterback. It's a heck of a job by Will Rogers throwing a football while getting hit. So we'll watch the play. See inside pressure, he steps right into it, and his arm's getting hit as he throws, and it's a back shoulder completion uh, to a freshman receiver who looked pretty good yesterday. So, you know, the, the question here is, where's pressure coming from? They're bringing four on the line of scrimmage, and what happens is they make an adjustment call here when the motion comes across in this two-back set, speed motion. Safety comes flying down to either take him or pressure him, come off the edge, one or the other. He winds up coming off the edge because, you know, the motion doesn't release. He's coming right off the edge. So it's some sort of adjustment call for that defense who's locking up single to the left side because it's a matchup thing, and they're zoning it kind of cloud look to the field over the top. And when motion comes across, his safety comes flying down in there. So let's look at a couple of things on the protection. First of all, four-man rush. If you look at the white, four white jerseys here, the line of scrimmage, outside, right guard, center left guard, left tackle. That's pretty clear. When this safety comes flying down here, here's the other thing. It's a two-back set. You're releasing in there to the right, and this is your sixth man in protection is the back, and he very clearly steps up to take this safety when he comes off the edge. So what's happening right in here? Somehow, center snaps, and you know this is pretty clear. It's one on one, one on one, to the right on that offensive front. Center and left guard step in here. They're comboing this. Um, I guess it's a three technique. I can't see it behind it. So you would think pretty naturally then the left tackle is one-on-one -on -one with his defensive end who's going inside. Safety is going to have that outside contained. What happens is, is ball snap, you're going to see Charles Cross left tackle, stiff arm him, shove him in, and now he's looking at this outside rusher. He's looking out here to the safety who flew downfield. Problem is you're in six-man protection, and the back is very clearly picking that up. And that's his job off the edge. The left guard, who I think this is Cole who's in the game, is comboing with the center right here. He's not even considering to look to help to his left. So one or the other, either Charles Cross is making a mistake here, thinking that he can hand this guy off and help to the outside, or the guard is making a mistake in that he should be helping here in this gap and leaving that nose guard with the center, one or the other. It's either a guard or a tackle issue. But on this play, they've let 93 come right through that uh, gap just inside of the tackle and is basically free to the quarterback. So Will Rogers, with that kind of protection, a free defensive end steps right into it, throws a ball, keeps his hand from hitting his helmet. Sometimes you break a thumb that way pretty easily and makes a really accurate throw to tight man-to-man -man back shoulder where his guy can catch the football. Okay, here's another one where we're kind of watching the right side of that offensive line. Very next play, it's third and 19 coming off the goal line, and it's a shovel pass, and watch them twist right into the shovel pass, shovel pass and blow it up. Boom, right there on the goal line. I almost have a safety. Now, how does that happen? Uh, it's pretty clear when you watch the replay right here. You've got Three on the line of scrimmage. Only one with their hand down, but that's what it is. Head up the nose and then over both of your tackles. And this linebacker is going to come up in the gap, and he's coming over right guard right here on this play. So it's only a four-man rush. And what I want you to watch is watch this linebacker and watch him come over Johnson and how that happens out on the edge. He um, rushes and Johnson – you know, effectively picks him up. It's in the gap over his right shoulder. He turns his butt, and he's now sideways in the hole. Okay. Meanwhile, the right tackle, Lashley, is seeing this twist happen, but he can't go anywhere because he's running into the defender who's doing exactly what he's supposed to do. He's tying up the guard and tying up the tackle to allow this twist to come inside. That's what's going on right here. Now, they have, if you, if you don't execute it just like this, they have a decent call considering what you've called, which is 
uh, Marks coming in here in a shovel pass. He's stepping right into the gap, gonna you know catch the shovel pass with a chance to you know, make some yards for your punter on third and nineteen, and they have a twist called right into it. However. This is a deal where if you go back and, and look at right guard again, linebacker over right guard, if right here, if that gets handed off, you know, if we understand this is twist, and they've set it up pretty good, but if you hand this off, tackle's going to pick that up if it's switched, and he comes inside on the twist, and the guard's in a perfect position to seal him off right there. And if he picks up that twist, watch what happens. Okay, here's a what if. You know, you look at this side, it's taken care of. If tackle is picking up that um, linebacker and you've handed it off on the twist and you just you know basically seal him off and stay in his way, you're going to catch the shovel pass and you're up the chute making yards for your punter right here. Instead, you turn and stay with the linebacker, don't hand it off and recognize twist. Tackle gets knocked off. He has no chance to get inside. And this defender just runs right into this shovel pass, knocks him down, and you're really fortunate that you get knocked down at the one and not in the end zone right here. All right, and here's one more example of when there were some protection breakdowns. If you look, there are four on the line of scrimmage. This linebacker, a linebacker is actually the fifth uh, right here, but you've got one, two, three, four on a third and eight play, potentially a five-man rush if all those guys come, but they don't all come. It's just four. Linebacker runs out of there. They twist in the middle and hit your quarterback. They decided his arm was going forward, and instead of a turnover, it was a, just a chance to punt it away. Uh, and we'll look at the tighter angle also. But from up here, just look at it uh, this way. You've got everybody standing up, but they are in those rush positions, right? The only difference, they don't have their hands down right here. So watch in the middle, right over the football. What do you have happening? You have right guard and center with that twist happening right in their A-gap. Here's what I mean. So they're all standing up, and right into the left shoulder of the guard and the right shoulder of the center – now, that defensive tackle right here is pushing through, and the twist is coming around into this gap right here, and that's who comes free and hits the quarterback. So it's a really simple one, two, twist over guard center. And you see it a lot. And as it happens, you know, right guard engages, stays with him, doesn't come off. Again, doesn't hand it off to the center, whether it's – didn't think to do it or didn't trust him. One or the other didn't get it handed off. And by the time he finally does to come off, it's too late. I can't, as the guard now, if you guys can kind of see what I'm seeing, again, we're talking about Johnson, the right guard. It's a little too late to come off of it and get to that twister who's now hitting your quarterback because he's standing there trying to make a throw on third and eight. Um so it's a protection breakdown, third and eight. I, what I think your quarterback is doing is wanting to step in here and make this throw right here to the outside shoulder so Williams can catch, drop to a knee, catch it, and you get yourself a first down. Um, we'll watch the other angle. It's actually a better angle of that uh, on the replay. Now you can kind of see it. It started late, but here it is. Um, this – Lyman actually started there. He's twisting around into this gap right here. So you watch 69, and he's trying to hand it off the center. Center's done an okay job here, stick, you know, standing him up. You've just got to hand that off a little better. Feet have got to be a little more square, and you've got to be earlier into that gap. And people go, well, the back didn't help. And this is Dylan Johnson, the running back. Well, his, his job is he is the sixth guy in protection. You've got five on four already. He's the sixth in protection if you need it, and he's watching that linebacker lined up in that gap. And if that linebacker had come to either side, he's going to stay in there and block him. But when he dropped on the snap, now he sees that and he's free to get out of there because he's thinking, man, it's only a four on five, right? Like that's his rule. So right here, you just got to hand this off, pick up that twist. He stands in there and makes a throw for a first down. One little protection breakdown. You get the arm hit, and it's almost a fumble. One of those where you're fortunate they reverse the call and you're able to punt it away. The good, the bad, the ugly. It was ugly there for a while, and as ugly as it was, you're down 34-14, to 20-point deficit in the fourth quarter. 
all of a sudden the team, they just kept playing and kept playing. And Will Rogers came to life. The offensive line started picking everything up. And Will Rogers completed 10 of 10 passes in the fourth quarter and brought them all the way back. Back to the good. Let's look at all 10 completions. Okay, this is the first of 10 straight completions for Will Rogers in the fourth quarter to lead him on a comeback in this game. This is some of the good. Protection holds up, step in, throw it against zone, and score on the next play. I'll show you what's happening right here. First of all, look at the protection. I think it's really good. They try to twist, but uh, they don't let them. Look at the right side, Scott Lashley, right tackle. They try to twist inside. He knocks him off his balance, holds him up, doesn't let it happen. Right guard Johnson doing an excellent job, stood him up, and even though he gets contacted, he doesn't turn him loose. They're trying to twist, but they don't let him. Left side is good, and I feel like Charles Cross is really good one-on-one -on -one right here. So the per pocket is perfect, and the timing on the route is perfect also. Let's go back. Look at Austin Williams in the slot. What does he see? Safety rotating back to the middle. He knows it's zone. He also knows it's zone because head-up defender is going to drop into the zone and give him a free inside release. So he's just going to hook it up in front of the safety when he sees and reads the coverage. And you get that first completion. This is how it's supposed to look from a protection and a timing standpoint. And this got him going. They score on the next play. Okay, here's the second of 10 in a row. It's going to be a screen pass to Ra Ra, bottom of your screen, coming back in there. Two blocks is what he needs. Actually may have uh, you know, kept it outside just a little and gotten more yards, but still it's not bad at all. And what I like about it most is right here, Charles Cross on this screen, looks up the linebacker, his responsibility blocks him, and Jameer Calvin, the smallest guy on the field, looks up his responsibility and blocks him. I really like number six in Maroon. I like what I saw from him. What I meant by that is if Ra Ra gets in here and stays on this hash between those two blocks, uh, he may get a first down. Still, it's a nice play. You see the block here coming to the left. Calvin, he's helped by slips, but stays on him. Cross a really nice block one on one in the open field on the hash, and that's what I was saying. I think right here, maybe a better chance to get a first if you stay out. But I understand that it is a tunnel screen, and he's trying to get in behind these blocks. And so, if that's the case, maybe just continue on over here. Regardless, nice play, and the completion is a screen pass. Okay, this is the third completion. It's going to be another screen. This time, it's to Polk up top, catching the screen pass. You're going to get a double block here on this defender from Austin Williams and Jameer Calvin. Williams stays with him, does a really nice job. You're going to see a couple of those nice blocks out front by Austin Williams right here. So the third completion of 10 in the fourth quarter was a screen pass. It made yards for you. Fourth completion in a row. Fourth quarter, not a screen pass this time. It's a nice protection on a three-man rush, a drop-in zone coverage, chooses to come to the back, and it's Dylan Johnson making a guy miss. That's just one-on-one. -on -one. Running back's got to make guys miss, and it's all him, all 23 right there is why you make a first down. There's a couple of things going on here to look at, though, a little more on this play. They lined up Wally into the boundary, and they have him crossing on that shallow cross that I think you were hoping you'd get some man-to-man -man look, maybe hit him running for a big play. But what it creates for you is with Calvin in this slot, he pushes up the hash and then curls underneath that zone and gives you – this high, low read with an underneath defender right there if you want to read it. And it looks to me like that's where Will Rogers' eyes are at the beginning of this play. See him looking left right here? And what's happening is, again, they're dropping in their zones. He sees it. Calvin reads it. And he's going to curl right here. And you have the crosser in Wally. Thing is, you got a defender who drops out here to the crosser. But I don't think this linebacker can actually get underneath this curl route. I, what I can't see is how close is the defender behind him. He could have been in his hip pocket, and that could be why right here Rodgers decided not to throw it. If you look very bottom of your screen, you see six. Uh, Jameer Calvin curling. If the ball's out right now on the hip of that defender, you may get a completion that curl for a first down. You know, I think he wants Wally, a little bit of hesitation. But what I like right here is this, he hitches. The ball does not come out to one or two. And there's no hesitation for him in going ahead and finding him now. Don't let him linger, 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 and let the defender get closer and get him blown up. There's, it's a little bit of a quicker decision. 
So, bang, he's got it now, and here's what that means. Instead of, again, if you wait and he's here and the defender's here, we got one yard of separation. At least you've gotten this ball to him with, you know, what are we talking about here? He's caught it with three to four yards of separation. And even though that's like a half second as this defender comes downhill, that half second in separation is why Johnson can turn and now get away from him and make a first down. So I like the timing if you're going to do that. All right, this is the fifth consecutive completion, fourth quarter, and this is just going to be a shovel pass in the middle. So it goes as a completion, it is, and you make yards. It's a nice play call right here. Um, two nice blocks. I'll show you who they are. If you look up front, it really, to me, it, you know, this whole thing starts with a one on one block from LaQuinston Sharp, who does his job. You're helped by an outside rush here that Charles Cross picks up at the end. You're helped by that. So it starts with Sharp, but Cam Jones steps up and hits a really good physical linebacker and blocks him enough right there. May have held him. Might have gotten away with it, but at least he turns him loose and doesn't get the call and uh, blocks him enough to allow Johnson to get up there and make some positive yards on the play. All right, here's the sixth consecutive completion, and this is the biggie. Two by two, but they do a tight formation, and Calvin's going to go across the field from the left slot to the far right sideline. Huge completion. Now, we don't get to see all the secondary here, so watch the protection, and then we'll look at a behind. You can see the route better. They go three-man rush, but they – you know, twist two gaps over right here, coming all the way across, and it's picked up. Now, it's three-man rush, but what I like here is the left tackle, Charles Cross, and the right tackle, um, Lashley. So you're a gap over. He's going outside, and Lashley locks him up one-on-one and takes care of it. Right here, this should happen. Left guard and center are working together on one guy who's just trying to tie him up. But Charles Cross sees what's happening right here, turns and picks him up, and he's got a clean pocket to sit in here and make a big throw. Um, again, you see the twist movement right there on the defensive front. Two across, bringing one all the way to the left, and Cross steps out here and nicely picks it up. And lastly, working up strong up top uh, on a defensive end. Really clean pocket. You give Will Rogers that kind of pocket, he's going to complete a lot of balls. Perfect read as well. Great design, too. We hadn't seen that route just a whole lot, but going all the way across the field. From behind, a little bit better look. You could see what was happening. There goes, uh, you know, kind of, if you even want to call it that, meshing, but coming across underneath. And what's making this work, if we go back to the top copy, um, Makai Polk, I know I'm making you sick right here, Wally is in the slot on this side. He's going to cross the face of the safety, go to the other side, and you know, sort of provide that deep mesh, if you will, with Calvin. What happens and really helps it is when Makai Polk releases to the inside and pushes this safety, gets right in his face and pushes him vertical. It sort of holds that safety and backpedals him in the middle of the field and opens up that deep sideline for the throw. So it's an excellent design. I'll go back to the behind copy. You can kind of see that happening now. It came in there late after the snap, so you didn't get to see it from the snap. There you see, top of your screen, there goes uh, Jameer Calvin crossing. He's getting behind Polk, and the vertical of Polk holds that safety right here in the middle of the field so that nobody's deep sideline. Excellent read. And, and honestly, it's one of those where they've got them if – that safety were to get out here because he sees guy going to the sideline, then Polk's going to catch a touchdown walking in the end zone. So you get protection. It's hard to cover those guys uh, who can get down the field like that. All right, Rogers, seventh straight completion, fourth quarter. is a little boundary screen up top to Polk. Gets a block out in front by Wally. It's not a knockdown by any means, but he's on him. Give you a chance to make some positive yards on a short screen. All right, the eighth consecutive completion, and this is a fun one to take a look at. We've got coverage. We've got a lot going on, so we'll just watch it first. Two by two, you get a five-man rush. It's picked up perfectly. A little pump fake still drills it in there, even though the pump fake drew the corner up to the route a little bit, and there was slight hesitation. So, look, there's a lot going on here. I'm going to take my time, settle in. 
It's two by two, ball on the right hash, single back who's checking and a part of the protection if somebody, if a fifth comes and they do. On the snap or before the snap, they're giving him a two safety look. They are disguising it really well, and they've done that before in this long film study. You've seen that. Looks like hard corners, looks like cover two. And another thing that makes it like cover two is they've split the football. See, the ball is on the hash, right? And they've split the ball back here. You don't have guys that are two safeties on the hashes, even though the ball is over here. And, and what I mean by that is as a quarterback, you look up, you see two deep. It really looks like cover two. But on the snap, they're not playing cover two. Watch those safeties to your left. They rotate. On the snap, what's happening? You're bringing five. That's three down and two linebackers. They're jumping into a cover three zone. So safety rotating down to replace these blitzing linebackers as underneath coverage. Safety rotating back to be a free Deep third, deep third, there's your cover three zone. And everybody's reading this, including the routes, and the route up top. Polk sees a corner drop, adjusts that route, runs the out past the stick. Excellent job. Quarterback is reading it as well because they take away your crossers underneath because of that zone coverage. And it's a little harder to get to that backside in breaking route because there's coverage on the inside. When you've got a soft corner, there isn't coverage on the outside, so he makes the right read and finds the guy the ball should go to. And so nice job here on eight in a row. You saw the pump fake, and for whatever reason, you know, I think it may just be a timing thing. Like he wants to let it go now and realizes Polk's doing what he's supposed to do is pushing this route past the first down stick. And so the pump fake, one little hitch right here, makes that defensive back jump a little better. So I thought it was an excellent catch to go up and use your hands and and be the receiver. Now, I wanted to look at protection, too. And again, I told you this would be a long one. There's three with their hands down, and they are head up or, or inside guard tackle up top, but head up your center and then outside rush here, and they're making room for two linebackers are going to step up and try to confuse your protection. And watch the guys up front pick this up. And in this film study, you've seen them not pick this up, right? Certainly. So the linebacker grubs is intentionally taken outside of the guard between guard and tackle to tie them up so that you can twist back inside with this defensive tackle. We'll, we'll get to the outside rush in a second. It's picked up by the back. But watch them pick up the twist. Grubs attacks a left guard who then goes out you know, he goes outside of the tackle. The end comes around behind. And watch Cam Jones pick him up. And this is what you got to do. Is you see it, recognize it, pick it up, hold him out of there. And not just get a body on him, but actually block him. You're probably, you know, holding his jersey a little bit right there. But you hold on every play. And that's one that's probably not going to get called. And the other thing is, too, the back steps up, takes the outside rusher. So hat on a hat, excellent protection, picking up a twist in the middle on a big completion to get you a first down and keep you going. All right, Roger's about to have nine completions in a row. This time it's going to be a screen down the wide side of the screen, uh, bottom of your screen, to the left, wide side of the field, to the left of the quarterback right here. And they certainly have formation and numbers. You can see it right away. It's Tulu coming back to catch the screen. And you've got Austin Williams, who's going to be up here and be your lead blocker on the outside. Wally does a nice job, too. He catches a hand in the face, knocks his helmet loose. Wally actually has to adjust his helmet during the play. But it's Austin Williams who makes the play happen. Uh, design, and, and you had leverage, a good play call at the right time. But here's a block that gets you actually a bigger play than just a few yards. And that's a senior knocking a guy back. So nice job. You see it working on the outside there. Leverage, pop in, and two lose dangerous. All right, and here's 10 in a row in the fourth quarter. And this is a big one. He's actually going to hit Wally on that vertical. And you see those safeties back there on the left side of your screen. And you can see here what happens to them. They start out with two, just like they've been doing a lot during the game. He read it better and better as the game went on, sees the rotation, fires it in there, and the safety can't get over. And, you know, it's an excellent play call and read. And and who knows? I, what I don't know is this straight-up called route or is this a quarterback and receiver adjusting to what he gets in the coverage? I don't really know that. 
and that would be a question for the coaching staff. But in, you know, you've seen a lot of you know field corner, right side corner rotating back, and one rotating down. This is the opposite. They're trying to come all the way back here with the that left corner back to I'm sorry that left safety back to center field and rotating down on top of Wally, dropping those corners. So your three deep includes a center fielder. It's just this safety trying to get back as opposed to the one that's a little deeper. So they're really trying to disguise it, and everybody reads it perfectly. So when you snap the ball, you get a three-man rush. It's blocked really well, first of all. Just before the snap, safety's trying to get back. You know you're getting vertical right here into the end zone, and that safety has rotated down. And I believe I'm seeing Will Rogers' eyes go to the middle of the field and actually see that safety back there to give him a clue what's happening. Turns, fires it, and it's an accurate throw before the safety can get there. 10 out of 10 in the fourth quarter, and you really couldn't do a better job. Thanks for watching this video, and thanks to Mississippi Land Bank for supporting me and for supporting these videos. And thanks to Mississippi Farm Bureau Insurance. Check them out at favorites.com, and I'll see you on the next one.